If you've ever held Apple's $129 matte finish pencil in your hand and thought, gosh, this thing could just slide right out of my hand and fall in the toilet, you wouldn't be alone. So to increase its usability and functionality, it needs modification. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. This episode's sponsor, PCBWay, offers instant quotes for straight up standard printed circuit boards, as well as assembled boards right on their website. They also offer fast and efficient quotes for design services through certified third party partners for PCB layout and design, electronic development, as well as firmware development. Click the link in the description to get your next project started. Simple or complex, PCB Way can help. For the finish on this pencil, I considered a soft touch like a Plasti Dip, but ultimately I want to paint it a color and I want to do with a clear gloss to give me that nice sticky finish. Let's take this pencil apart and figure out how we're going to hold it while we paint and finish it. This is actually really key when you're making a prototype or a mock-up is how you handle these parts so that you can finish them correctly. And this can oftentimes be the difference between success and failure in your project by having good management of these parts when you're painting them. So this means making a tool, and this is often the case when I design something, is making a special tool so that I can actually make the part or finish the part exactly the way I want. I'm rounding off all these edges so we don't scrape any of the electronics inside of this pencil and ruin it. I bought a wax and grease remover because I've had issues in the past with my paint and my adhesion and getting fish eyes and I don't want to have that with this project. I actually read the directions on the can. It says wipe the part down and then let it dry and wipe it with a clean rag and I'm making sure not to touch it with my fingers or anything like that. Let's spray paint it. I'm using this clear metal cast paint that I've used in the past and I'm getting fish eyes in a pattern. Just shit. Gotta redo it. Gosh darn it. This metal cast paint is pretty tricky stuff. I had similar problems with the ray drive that I painted on the aluminum and I had to redo that as well and I'll link to that video up here on the right so you can see my follies in that video. I'm going to go with some acetone, and I'm always nervous about acetone because it can really eat and soften up the plastic. And I don't know what this stuff is made of that this pencil is, but luckily it's not softening this plastic. I'm going to put down some adhesion promoter, which is like a clear primer for this plastic in hopes that it's going to help get us a better finish. With the adhesion promoter, you put on some light coats, and then you need to top coat it within 10 minutes. Let's try the metal cast again and see if we're more successful. Let's turn the fan on to the foam core spray booth and I'll link to that video. You're going to rotate the nozzle tip 90 degrees so that your fan pattern is in a horizontal position because we are painting up and down on this object. So we want that fan spray to be horizontal, right? So we don't get too much paint going on to the item. This is particularly critical because it's a very thin uh, item that we're painting. So lots of light little coats. This is basically a clear coat with some tint in it. So it's very thin, it's a tricky paint. And I'm getting a little bit of a run or a sag on the whole thing, which is fine because I'm able to come in here with a rag and soak up that little bit of extra uh, clear slash pigment that has run down to the bottom where the tip would normally be and we can soak that up and we can get a nice uniform finish at the bottom here so let's try it out just from the metal cast finish you can see it's a little bit glossy and that's giving us a nice little bit of extra grip much better than the stock apple pencil in my opinion and I really like that, so I'm headed in the right direction. There's still some modifications and customizing that I wanna to do to this pencil, so let's go ahead and tackle those next. 
But we're going to lay down a two-part urethane clear coat with this Graco Finex HVLP spray gun. I'll leave a link to that as well. Works out really good. This is my clear coat spray gun that I just got for another project, and so very timely. Laying down a nice coat of clear two-part urethane right here. And we're going to end up putting two coats on this so that we get a really nice finish. Let's hit it with the second coat of two-part urethane clear. I wanna have a really nice, tough, durable finish that's gonna last me the lifetime of this pencil and so that if I throw it in my bag, it's not gonna get beat up or the clear is gonna chip off. I wanna make sure that I have a nice uniform grip everywhere on this pencil. I think that the stock Apple pencil tip is a little too crayon-like for me, meaning it's a little too fat, and I want to make it a little bit more like a ballpoint pen, which is what I'm used to sketching with. So we're going to remove a little bit of material towards the bottom, not all the way to the tip, and we're going to try to sharpen this thing up just a little bit. I don't want to mess up the calibration on this thing, so I'm going to chuck it up and put it in my drill and use this as a little mini lathe. We'll start with like a 220, here I'm hitting it with like a 400 and then finishing it off with like an 800. I'm gonna stain this with a Sharpie. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of heat from my heat gun and that's gonna be to get the ink to really absorb into the plastic so that it doesn't leave a mark on my screen or on my finger and it really dyes the part well. Let's reassemble this thing, shall we? For comparison purposes, let's compare a gel pen on the left and a Papermate ballpoint pen that I draw with on the right. So very much like a ballpoint pen at this point. And the experience is very smooth. I know that people talk about, oh, drawing on a tablet is not like drawing on a piece of paper, and it's not. I'm okay with the smoothness of drawing on the glass, weirdly enough. But the black tip on a white surface is really, really nice. It really shows me where I'm going to lay down my line. That in combination with the nice grippiness of the gloss finish makes this truly enjoyable to draw with. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hey, and don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook sometimes, Twitter usually, and now Instagram. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.